Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making chocolate cake. We're going to make two nine inch chocolate cake layers. And I know you always hear me talk about the creaming method of mixing. This one is known as the one stage method and it doesn't use any butter at all. It uses liquid fat, oil, and that's going to make it more tender. But before we get started, I'd like you to click that notification button. Become a subscriber. I need you. I want you to, to join me for all my tips and videos because they're awesome. All right. So let's get started on this awesome two layer chocolate cake that is so tender. It literally melts in your mouth. Goes with any frosting. You could frost it with a mousse. You could frost it with buttercream, ganache, whatever you want. And you may see it in a few videos in the future. So preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the first thing you want to do, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you want to take two nine inch round cake pans. I sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray. Uh, I put in a parchment circle and I have a wonderful video on how to make a parchment circle really easy. Put it in there, spray it again, flour it, dump out the excess in the sink, and set it aside. So this is all part of our mise en place. This is getting everything ready so you're not running around the kitchen like a chicken without a head, getting ingredients as you need them. You want to have them ready. So in my electric mixer, I'm going to put all my dry ingredients, all right? So what I have here is my all-purpose flour, and I'm going to read to you to make sure because there's a lot of ingredients um, in here. So dry ingredients in one bowl. We're going to whisk our liquid ingredients in a another bowl. In this case, I'm going to put it in a pourable bowl or a liquid measuring cup. And you just add it to the dry ingredients. It's easier than the creaming method. It's super, super easy. And occasionally it is known in the pastry world as the dumping method because you're basically dumping ingredients into a bowl. Super easy, super delicious and it makes a very thin batter. So don't get upset, you didn't do anything wrong. So in here I have my all-purpose flour. Um, I have one and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna put in one cup of granulated sugar. All right, one cup of packed light brown sugar. And make sure you do that right before because sometimes that needs a little breaking up. Um, I also have three quarters of a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, and it's not Dutch processed. Uh, it is natural cocoa powder, so it's going to, it's acidic, so it's going to react with the baking soda that we have in here uh, in, in our recipe, so that will help with the leavening. So I just want to make sure it is three fourths of a cup, nice and chocolatey. And then our chemical leaveners. We have two teaspoons of baking soda. Important, it's going to react like I just said. Baking soda is a base. It needs an acid to create a neutralization reaction, which helps create carbon dioxide. And that's going to leaven our cake. Awesome. Two teaspoons of baking soda. I have uh, one teaspoon of salt, and I have one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. That's all going to go in here. All my dry ingredients are in there. And now I'm going to take a whisk. You could also use your paddle attachment, but I really want to get these whisked up very well. So I'm going to do that with my whisk. And sometimes because of the brown sugar, you want to just sort of give it a smash. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to break the rules. I'm going to use my best, my best measuring tool, my hands. And I'm going to squeeze. I'm going to squeeze because some, sometimes my brown sugar, and I just measured it, sometimes it can have soft lumps, almost like wet sand. So I really want a smooth cake, so I really want to get this uh, nice and smooth. You can put it through a sieve if you want to. You don't need to. Normally, I don't have to, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling this, and I'm literally feeling this. I'm putting my hands in it, and I just want to make sure that it's nice. Nice and, uh, and mixed in. All right, so it is now. If you wanted to put it through a sieve, you could. All right, I'm going to just wash my hands for two seconds. 
just to get the cocoa powder off. And then I'm going to get my liquid ingredients. So we're going to get this right on here. Put it on our base. Get our paddle ready. I don't like the paddle just to mix the dry ingredients if there's that many dry ingredients. I just like, I mean, you can do that, but I also think that sometimes you need a little, a little more mixing with the dry ingredients. But once the liquid ingredients go in, you don't want to overmix because you don't want to develop gluten, right? So that's that network of proteins that actually creates toughness, but it also gives a little structure. So we do need some. Secret ingredient, remember, no butter in this, canola oil or vegetable oil or coconut oil, whatever you want. I have oil in here. Oil is the secret ingredient to keeping it moist. It coats all the gluten strands. It coats all the little bits of flour and it won't allow them to join with each other. That's what creates that protein matrix, that network of protein that creates that toughness. It won't allow them to create too much and it will coat each one and create moistness and tenderness. That's what we want in a chocolate cake. Although I do like creaming method cakes as well. All right, so in my large measuring cup, or you could do it in a bowl, one cup of well-shaken, well-shaken buttermilk. You want to shake it because sometimes it settles. That is an acidic ingredient. It's a, um, it's a fermented ingredient. Uh, it's cultured and it will add some acidity to our baking soda. Remember that neutralization reaction? It's gonna happen in, with this. All right, half a cup of, I'm using just vegetable oil. Could be canola, could be anything you want. Uh, two large eggs, the whole egg, and I'm just gonna help them in here so I don't get an egg in the face, all right? Two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. Always like to take a little whiff before it goes in. All right. Now I'm going to whisk this up, just gingerly whisk it up. Just want to break up your eggs. There's nothing, you're not like adding air into it or anything. You're just breaking it up. Now in the wings, I have some extra liquid, which I am going to need. In the wings, I have one cup of boiling water that I poured into a liquid measuring cup, and I also put in about a tablespoon of espresso powder. Uh, instant espresso powder, if you don't have that, just use coffee. If you wanna just get brewed coffee, one cup of brewed coffee. Coffee and chocolate, better than peanut butter and jelly. All right, now I'm gonna turn this on low. Wet ingredients go in slowly, add them slow, slow and steady. Let those dry ingredients get them. Get your head back a little bit because the cocoa, it'll get you. <laughs> so just get that in there. This is not going to be enough wet ingredients to get it to a beautiful, the beautiful liquid state that we want it in. It's still a little thick and this is good. Almost looks like a batter now, but we're not there yet. So I am going to slowly pour in my one cup of hot coffee. If you don't like coffee, don't despair. I'm putting it in real slow because it's going to slosh right back at you, so go slow. Now, if you don't like coffee, just use boiling water, just hot water. That would be fine. Some people don't like coffee. Some people are not coffee people, so don't worry about it. Now, at this stage, I'm going to stop the machine because it can, you have a little bit of a thicker batter and I'm just going to, I'll show you. See it? It's gonna be thin. This type of cake, this category of cake, this um, one stage method or dumping method like I like to call, uh, which is basically dry ingredients added uh, to the bowl and then wet ingredients added on top. It's just super easy, very thin liquidy batter. And that's exactly the way it should be, but it's not like a creaming method cake. Remember, that cake almost has like a frosting consistency in the batter. It's an emulsion, uh, and it basically is 
is sort of almost fluffy. This is not going to be fluffy. Don't get upset if it's not fluffy. It's not supposed to be. Getting my cake pans ready. My oven's already hot. Not going, remember, I'm not going to do this for too long. We can always, we can always mix it up with our spatula. Look how thin that is, right? The first time I made one of these cakes years ago, I thought, uh-oh, <gasps> I really screwed up. Nope best cake I ever made. Delicious. All right, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm just going to take, like I always do, some new mixing bowls for different type of uh, mixers don't have that little indentation in there. Uh, or not, not indentation, but like a little bump up that you have to sort of mix around. So just go around, make sure everything is smooth. There's no lumps and bumps. All right, and it's smooth. See it? Smooth. And you're going to evenly divide it. All right, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going to move this over. Bring my other one on top. So this makes two nine-inch layers. And just eyeball to make sure that they're both about even. Sometimes I weigh my batter before. And I do it, but I just like to eyeball it, usually. And it usually comes out just the way I like it, just right. This is going to bake for 30 to 35 minutes, and you do know how to tell if a cake is done. So you're going to look at the sides. The sides should pull away from the pan sides. The cake should pull away. And when you stick a knife into the center, it should come out perfectly clean. And when you touch it, it should spring back. So 30 to 35 minutes. Don't touch these pans in the oven. Make sure they have a little space so that the heat can go through. And I'll see you back between 30 and 35 minutes. So my one stage layer cake came out of the oven. Delicious chocolate. I'm going to show you. When you put your finger on there, see how it springs right back? It's done. I even put a, sh a really small sharp knife in the center and it comes out clean. I'm going to let them cool for about 15 minutes before I cut around the edges and flip them over onto a cardboard cake circle where I can do whatever I want with them. And look forward to some videos because we're going to be using this one stage chocolate cake layer. Become a subscriber. Until next time.